Hello my soccer universe! First things first, I misinformed you about the schedule for the semi-finals. Both games happened of course yesterday and so you get now a review video instead of a second semi-final and I hope you did not rely on this because most of these times are always as I know them when I make these slides and I didn't double check but I was actually a little bit surprised that they did it this way that we have both semi-finals on the same day I guess they didn't want to give any disadvantage so the first one was played in Boaké uh, and then they can travel to Abidjan whereas the other one, the later one already happened in Abidjan so shorter time but you do not have to travel be it as it may another thing that I forgot to say in the last video we do not have a single group winner in the semi-final, let alone in the final. And we have a final now between these two guys, Nigeria and the host, the Cote d'Ivoire. That sounds familiar. Yes, this was one of the big matches in the group stage. They were in the same group, a group stage that the Cote d'Ivoire barely, barely, barely survived. And interestingly enough, they met in the same stadium. Will they wear the same jerseys? That's, I think, one thing that I am uh, very curious about. Wearing my new Nigeria away jersey, although I for this AFCON it's more or less a stand-in for the home jersey because the home jersey is a dark one this time around. Very, very happy to have that. And I also want to point out I have here the Angola jersey. Yes, they got eliminated in the quarters, but I said, let's get it in there. And yes, I had only three semi-finalists. And there's a whole long story about uh, me and the DRC jersey, which may be revealed sometime soon. A little bit more about the semifinals in general before we talk about uh, uh, the games in particular. I think both were kind of uh, interesting. I don't want to say necessarily enthralling, but they actually had good action there. I honestly think that both of the outsiders in South Africa and the DRC gave their um, more name opponents a real scare. And it would not have been a huge surprise if either of these two would have advanced. In the end, I would even say this was probably one of the best performances of, of the Cote d'Ivoire. There was a really weird um, referee control, I don't want to say controversy, yeah, maybe con 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 controversy because it's an odd call, but I think it was all, all correct in the Nigeria South Africa game that could have really swung the game in South Africa's favor. But in the end, the two favorites uh, go through. So we have a big name final. If you would like a big name sub-Saharan final, but you know, all the uh, Northern African teams have been history already when we went into the quarterfinals. I want to start in Boaké, in the Stade de la Paix, the Stadium of the Peace. Uh, Boaké, the second largest city in the Côte d'Ivoire, when Nigeria met South Africa. And again, one with the jerseys. When I did my uh, jersey re review, I really didn't like the South Africa third jerseys. I still don't like them as South Africa jerseys. But clearly they thought that they are lucky jerseys because they have been wearing them over and over and over again. It is not a stage when I say in the review, we hopefully won't see them much. I think South Africa could have very well have played in their white jerseys and it would have provided enough contrast. So a little bit of a downer there. The game was a little bit boring at the beginning. It has to be clearly said. Uh, both teams more on the defensive side and both teams have actually really good defensive records. Uh, neither of them have conceded a goal in the knockout stage. That already tells a whole lot uh, about them. And uh, while maybe chance why South Africa had a little bit more in the first half, I actually felt that Nigeria was more or less in control. And they were even more in control when Osiman gets uh, brought, uh, brought down in, in the box midway through the second half when it opened a little bit more up. And it's a penalty. It's a really clear penalty that um, Ekong or Trost Ekong uh, converts and it's 1-0 for Nigeria. And at that point, uh, it's really seemed that the favorites are going through. It all looks uh, in favor of them. Um, there was a good chance, I think I want to say, or, or, or already by Mok Mo, Mo Um But then it really got weird when um, uh, Yusuf fouls uh, uh, Percy Tao in the box. And from that, a cut that the referee says waves on. And from that, a counterattack springs uh, where the ball via Lukman uh, then falls to Osiman, um, who 
doesn't know whether to shoot or control it, but anyway, it lands in the net 80, 80 50 minutes, 2 0 Nigeria, and the game is done, 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 dusted. It, it, it will have been just a re routine Nigeria win without really stretching themselves. And there were wild celebrations for Nigeria, and then suddenly the referee is called uh, to the screen. And initially, I thought, because the way they showed the perspective, uh, they're looking, well, maybe, maybe there's a foul in the build-up. Um, and I'm thinking, yeah, but the referee had a really clear view of, of that. He waved it on. Well, if you look at it closely, it's, I mean, by the letter of the law, and it is more than game, this is a foul. I personally don't like these types of uh, to begin. But I look at it and I see, oh, this, this could be in the box. And then you see, yeah, this is actually the box. So instead of 2-0 Nigeria... We have a penalty for South Af Africa and suddenly it's 1-1 because Mokwena duly converts the penalty. And then in the following minutes in stoppage time, Nigeria was really un un unsettled and, and probably should, should have given up the um, losing goal as, as well. I mean, there was a huge chance for South Af Af Africa where a, a clear ball is uh, put over the bar. So um, that was a really, really nervy moment. For the Super Eagles, who haven't had until that point, I really thought had actually control of the game. Uh, over time, almost as expected, not really that much happening because it it very much went to a pair penalty man shootout. Um, but I have to say, the Nigerian coach br uh, did something brave. Took to, to, to took of uh, Lukman and Osim and brought in Nacho and Moffi, new strikers, and that immediately paid. Uh, not immediately, but soon paid off uh, because Moffi had been just five, five, five minutes on. He's clear on goal. He is tripped by Kekana. Initially, it's a penalty uh, given, or no, it was nothing given, but uh, the referee is then called to the box to to, to, to his screen. You see, it's a clear last lesson for also red card for Kekana. Not a penalty. The free kick uh, was then an easy one into the hands of the South Africa go goalie. And so it goes to penalty Ronwin Williams, the star of the previous penalty, penalty shootout. And that kind of was also a little bit um, a question. Will he have the same heroics in him? Well, short answer, no, he didn't. I mean, Moffi steps up and converts the first penalty, says it in the tone. Then the picture got wild. I did not see the McQuena penalty. I only saw for a brief split second an expression of a uh, face that was not very happy. I thought, oh, South Africa might, I might have missed one. Then I see Omeru oh, oh, and he converts. So it's 2 0 for Nigeria. Mayam Bella needs to already under pressure convert. He, he does. And then Ole Aina steps up and puts it over the bar. Uh, he really wanted to pull, pull, pull it high, you, 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 you can see, but a little bit misplaced it. So uh, at that point, if uh, Makopa uh, would convert, it's all level again, but he sees his penalty safe. Then Ekong, who already scored the penalty game, and Mala convert, and Iannaccio steps up, wins it for Nigeria. Nigeria take a little bit the scenic route to get through to the final, but at that point uh, of the same semifinals, I would have said that Nigeria have to be considered the favorites. They were made to sweat, and the South Africa team was working really, really hard. I mean, I think one uh, one secret of their success clearly has, has, has to be the seven of the starters play for Mamelodi Sundowns. So they have a little bit of a synergy there as well. And that, that, that definitely helped, but South Africa were one of the highlights of this tournament as well. Um, so especially the way that they ousted, for instance, Mo Mo Morocco and then the penalty uh, shooter against the KK Bury. There was really some good stuff in there. So on that side, a little bit uh, sad to see Bafana Bafana go. This was the first semifinal since 2000, where they also got eliminated by Nigeria. And it has been a long time there since we have seen South Africa that far. And then it was the little meta of the hosts who barely squeaked into this knockout stage where then they um, first ousted Senegal on penalties in admittedly a pretty good performance and then had no business beating Mali except uh, Mali still don't, doesn't know how, how they lost that at the one but they take on the DRC the DRC did actually have maybe not the great results. I mean, they didn't win a game until the quarterfinals, but they also had not lost one. But they had a good showing against Egypt in the way that they um, disposed of Guinea. I really thought this is a team that's 
they have something growing here that might actually make them in interesting and to a certain degree I actually want to see them in the final. They are kind of a little bit the DRC are the sleeping giant in Africa. Um, very not notable scenes at the, at the beginning of the match during the national anthems all the DRC players made a protest you know holding and holding um, um, with this just of protest against the violence against uh, girls and women in their country um, and they actually started out better and got an early goal however it was clear the goalie um, Fafana had the ball and it was pushed out from, from him. But I would say for the first 20, 20 minutes or so, the DRC had, had had a little bit more of the game. And I would have liked to see a goal being scored for them there because I think this would have made this game even more interesting than it already was. I have to say also the color match was brilliant. The orange against the blue. Uh, everything there I really, really, really liked. However... Uh, credit where credit is due, as bad as the Cote d'Ivoire were against Mali, they really stepped it up and towards the end of the first half, Alea misses a free header and then Cassie makes a shot that just kisses the outside of the, off, of the, of the post. At that point, it seemed like high time that the Cote d'Ivoire caught, caught score. Uh, Cote d'Ivoire is also the better in the second half and in the longer the game went, the less I saw from the DRC. There was a clearly a trend down and the um, Cote d'Ivoire got going the goal though they get from a really uh, weird cross that ends uh, Alea first goal of the tournament uh, miss hits uh, the ball but it takes a weird bounce over the goalie who is too far out of the uh, goal weird goal I mean at first you think is this aggravated but I, th I think it was everything about this was non-intentional but it's a goal nonetheless and so it counts. Alea himself had, had had another big chance to make it actually two 0 but in the end, I have I have to say this was then a relatively safe win for the Col d'Ivoire, who have made a complete turnaround again. They sacked their coach after the group stage because they thought they were going out, and now they're going for continental glory against the Nigeria team that has already beaten them in the group stage. But it's a completely, completely different makeup that also has to be said. Uh, looking into this final, which will be played on Sunday in the evening, same time as Milan against Nap Napoli. I'm not happy about that, but I will put a little bit more focus on uh, this final. Actually, Sunday is any anyway crazy. I have a last game. I have Milan Na Napoli as a Super Bowl at night. It might take a while until I get to that review video for the FCOM final, just putting it out there uh, in case you were, were wondering. Uh, but ahead of, of the final, I mean, Nigeria are now seen as outsiders by my model because uh, they don't have the home field advantage. I think it's a relatively even final. Uh, so I personally, the better team is Nigeria. But I really, really, really cannot gauge how good is this Cote d'Ivoire team. That I have to clearly say. We also have a third place playoff, uh, a little bit anachronistic if you would like, where of course South Africa take on the DRC, another really, really e e even one. Uh, it really depends which team takes it more seriously, although for both of them reaching a semi-final is a major, major uh, achievement. So why wouldn't they show up? I think none, none of them is really, really disappointed. So yeah, another close one my model gives South Africa. A slight, a slight advantage. Um, as I said, I really cannot gauge the DRC. In any case, that was it from me, from, from the FCON. Who do you think will win the big final? How did you like the semifinals? Give me a thumbs up. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel. If you want to see more in my soccer universe, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.